Hi, this is Sharad. Um, in this session, we are going to learn something about JDBC. Uh, JDBC stands for Java Database Connectivity. And the prerequisite for this session is Java and SQL. So it would be good if you have some knowledge on Java and uh, nice uh, if you have some kind of basic understanding on SQL. Uh, so if you haven't gone over those topics yet, I suggest you to uh, go to those tutorials first and then come back to JDBC. So this is the agenda for our session. As usual, we'll start off uh, with the introduction and uh, we'll see what JDBC is and uh, why you use JDBC and all those things. And you have something called as JDBC drivers. So we'll see what the different types of JDBC drivers are and uh, we'll have a look at the comparison and see which driver is better than the other. Right. And, uh, then we'll uh, move it and uh, look at the various classes that are involved in JDBC. So we are going to look at the, some of the important classes that are involved in JDBC. Right. And uh, if not all, the most important classes from a developer's perspective would be the statement and uh, result sets. Right. So we are going to provide some more emphasis on these classes and see what the different types of statements are and how you use these statements and in what scenarios uh, you use which kind of statements and things like that. And uh, we are also going to have a look at a deeper look at the JDBC result set and uh, how to use the result set and what all things you can do with the result set. Right? Then we'll briefly uh, look at uh, transactions and discuss a bit on transactions. And uh, finally, uh, we are going to have uh, some examples and uh, see how to basically write a complete uh, program using JDBC, right? Okay. All right, so let's start off. So here on the current slide, I have two different things. Right? On the left hand side, I have a bunch of uh, my web application components like the JSP servlets and Java. And on the right hand side, I have a database. Right? So we know that uh, my web application can communicate with the end user and also perform certain kind of business logic, right? So let's take a simple example of uh, a login application. So uh, I've created a website and I want only authenticated users to log in to my website and view whatever information I'm providing them, right? So the first screen would be a login screen wherein I ask for a username and password. And only when the user enters the correct username and password combination, I'm going to allow the user to view the contents of my web page. Right. So here, my web application is uh, capable of communicating with the user and it's also capable of performing certain kind of business logic. So the kind of business logic it performs here is validate the username and password and only if it is correct, send the response to the client if not send an error message to the user, right? But there is one main component missing here. That component is nothing but the data, right? So where does this web application get the data from? So it's not, it doesn't really store data in itself. It can only perform some kind of business logic at runtime, but where does all the data come from? That comes from the database. Right. So the database is the place where all your information, all your important information related to your web application is stored, right? So your web application, your front end application communicates with the end user and performs some kind of business logic and your database stores the information which is used by your web application, right? So which component do you think is more important? Is it the front end application or is it the back end database? In fact, both are really very important because without the front end web application, there's no, no use of the data. And uh, without the data, there's no use of providing a front end web application. Right. But as you can see here from this image, there's a disconnect between these two, right? So how are you going to bridge the gap between the your web application your front-end application and your back-end database so this is where jdbc comes into the picture right so jdbc bridges the gap between your 
front end application or it need not even be a web application it could be a simple java file which you are trying to execute right and the database so it provides a medium to communicate with the database and fetch the results from the database and also store results to the database plan right so as we have uh, said earlier J jdbc stands for java database connectivity right so the name itself uh, implies that it is providing you connectivity to the J database from java right so again as the name implies you can use jdbc only with java so it's compatible only with java language right and what is exactly jdbc it's nothing but it's an api which you use to connect to a database so we know that we use different types of apis in our day-to-day -day programming so let's uh, take an example of uh, data structures so we have a number of uh, data structures available in java um, already provided in the java util package like array list or vector or hash map so in order to store values uh, to a hash map what do you do you use the hash map api right so, so in a similar fashion you've got a jdbc api in order to connect to the database and communicate with the database information present in the database basically right so this is where database this is where jdbc comes into the picture and uh, this is how you connect to your database but this is only one means of connecting to the database jdbc is not the only way through which you can connect to a database from your application there are a um, uh, number of different ways in which you can connect to the database and uh, probably some are even more efficient than data jdbc but jdbc is uh, the simplest way in which you can connect to a database right okay so the same thing which we discussed in our previous slide um, we've got our application which communicates with the users right and we've got the information in the database in order to get the fetch the information from the database we use the jdbc api right and in turn uh, you also need a jdbc driver installed on the client side in order to communicate with the database right so let's say that uh, you, you, want, you want to communicate with the JDBC manager, right? So uh, from your application, you actually connect to the JDBC manager using the JDBC API, right? But that JDBC manager ultimately needs to communicate with the end database itself, right? The database is present in some other server in some other location, right? And uh, your JDBC manager uh, needs a medium to communicate uh, with the database. So that is done using the JDBC driver. So JDBC driver is going to provide the required information to the JDBC manager in order to communicate uh, with the database, right? So these are the two main components of JDBC. Whenever you see JDBC, uh, you have JDBC API and also the JDBC driver, right? So we are going to discuss more uh, about these things in uh, a little bit more detail in the future slides. So it, it's probably going to make more sense there.